Okay, what about others? They have not joined. Okay, so who is basically recording this uh, course? Uh, Praveen, is it? Yes, sir. Okay, so can you send me the link to the place where you have uh, stored? No, sir, it will be saved for in uh, Saban Sir Drive. Oh, okay, okay, I'll get it from you. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so in the last class, um, we sort of uh, wrote um, wrote an expression for uh, or found an expression for the PDF of a jointly Gaussian random variable, random vector. So for example, if you have a let's say xn, uh, we say that it's Gaussian with the zero mean and covariance k. That essentially means that if you look at the density xn of x1 through xn, it will be 1 by 2 pi over n by 2 times the determinant of k power half, right? So that is the square root of determinant of k times what? Times exponential of minus, I'll call this x1 through xn as a cap, you know, vector x. So it will be x transpose, let, let me call this as x transpose. So the row vector is x transpose k inverse x divided by 2, right? This is the expression. Now, um, then we started looking at an example, uh, example of uh, a Gaussian random vector in R2. Um, so we saw that the joint distribution there was 1 by 2 pi sigma 1, sigma 2, square root of 1 minus rho squared times exponential of what do you uh, write here sorry minus uh, z1 squared divided by sigma 1 squared plus 2 times rho times z1 z2 divided by sigma 1 sigma 2 minus z2 squared divided by sigma 2 squared entire thing divided by 1 minus rho squared, right? So this was the expression for uh, the joint distribution. So rho is what? K12 divided by sigma1, sigma2. So K12 is the expected value of x1, x2, that is K12. So sigma1 is the standard deviation, that is square root of uh, the variance. Fine? Yes, sir. Is that fine? Hello. Okay. Sir, sir yes. I have a question here. Yes. Sir, uh, can you go to the previous page also? Yes. Uh, uh, sir, in this question, uh, in this mm. one, the expression you have written, the PDF, this mm -hmm. one is for uh, when W gets transformed to Z by AW. Yes, in the previous notation, yes. So, sir, uh, so here, uh, but you have said that this is the, tr like, uh, PDF of any uh, a random vector. No, no, it's not any random vector, right? It's a it's the PDF of jointly Gaussian random vector. See, the flow was this: you took a Gaussian random vector with zero mean and identity covariance. It's essentially IID random variables, right? You stack together and call it as a vector. Yes. So for that, I know the distribution, right? And then we define what is known as jointly Gaussian. Essentially, you take any linear combination, the resulting random variable will be Gaussian. Then we said if Z is jointly Gaussian, then you transform it AZ. AZ will also be jointly Gaussian. Now we are supposed to find the PDF of it. Yes. Right? So then we said, well, you take uh, W, which is zero mean uh, identity covariance uh, random vector, and then you multiply, pre multiply it by a matrix to get AW, which I called Z. Right? Then we saw that Z. Yes. Uh, I, the PDF of Z was what? Uh, it's exponential of minus half Z transpose, that A transpose inverse A inverse Z divided by 2, yeah. right? The whole divided by 2, power, 2 pi power N by 2, the square root of determinant of uh, A, right? So that's what we got. Do you agree? Yeah. Right? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. this corresponds to the PDF of Z, or it corresponds to a joint 
joint uh, it corresponds to the pdf of a jointly gaussian random vector with mean zero and covariance a a transpose right yes, yes so yes. that means you give me any covariance k i know what is the distribution how how to write the pdf of that the pdf turns out to be this right yeah that's what it so, is so uh, this one is not dependent on a like uh, no so if we get the k then we don't need a uh, see for example i can write uh, this x1 through xn i can think of it as um multiplication of so i can write this way okay so x1 through xn x is k power half times w i can write that so what is w w is gaussian zero vector identity covariance okay if i you know what k power half okay we will see this what what k power half is all about so if you look at the expected value of x it is zero it's jointly gaussian because it is the linear transformation and if you look at the covariance covariance will be k you agree yes sir yeah that's it right so you can think of it as some transformation but uh, moving forward we will not explicitly write like this we will say x is a gaussian random vector with zero mean and some covariance of course we will also shift the mean to something else rather than zero uh, and write an expression but for now this is what it is do you agree Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yes. So, uh, given uh, x is uh, zero mean and uh, hmm. okay, variance may var covariance matrix six k, hmm. can we write all the x such x's uh, as linear transformation of some w? Yes, we can write that. That's what this shows. With a uh, as k power of. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So now uh, this row. i'll write it explicitly so this is x1 x2 expected value of x1 x2 divided by sigma 1 is what expected value of x1 square expected value of x2 square what is this called okay so for those um, who are this is called the correlation coefficient cross correlation coefficient okay this is called the cross correlation coefficient okay why is this called uh, cross correlation so essentially um, i'll do a quick uh, thing so i can uh, if you look at the set of all random variables with finite variance okay you take all random variables with finite variance okay such random variables on such and on that particular set i can define an inner product inner product is nothing but inner product of two random variables x y belonging to that set will be basically expected value of x y so this will be inner product of x1 x2 okay what will be this this will be norm of x1 right because square root of expected value of x1 squared is nothing but square root of inner product of x1 with respect to itself right x1 x1 times x2 okay all that i'm doing is basically i can write so let me write it here this is x1 divided by norm of x1 x2 divided by norm of x2 i can write it like this so now what kind of a so if you imagine this as a vector what kind of a vector is this or what kind of a random variable is this unit norm or unit variance in this case do you agree similarly x2 by norm of x2 so i am taking two unit norm or unit vector and taking the dot product of that that gives me correlation right so if the angle is very small then the correlation is very high or the uh, inner product is very high so this is a new way of looking at the correlation um, okay is that fine yes sir any questions others hmm? okay what can you say about this uh, suppose uh, the absolute value of this hmm? okay suppose i take two unit vector or inner product absolute value is less than or equal to 1 1 1 right why cauchy schwarz 
norm of u times norm of v so norm of u is 1 norm of v is 1 so it's less than equal to 1 so what can you say about uh, uh, if norm is the absolute value is between it's less than 1 what can you say about this should be between minus 1 and 1 so what can you say about rho rho also should be between 1 and minus 1 okay is this fine everyone hmm? yes sir yes sir yes sir let's uh, move on so there is one small uh, thing so if we have a random vector uh, let's say z um, which has zero mean and uh, some covariance k i'll add a vector which is mu okay mu is a vector to get a random vector u okay so do you think this is a jointly gaussian random vector yes or no yes sir yes sir why so because z is uh, jointly gaussian and we are adding mu to every element of z so Okay. You will, so you will also be jointly Gaussian. Yeah. Basically, what you are doing is, you, if you take linear combinations, it's linear combination of z plus linear combination of u. Linear combination of u is a constant, right? Linear combination of z is a Gaussian random variable. So the sum will be again Gaussian, but with non-zero mean. Okay. So this is perhaps zero mean. So this z is zero mean and some covariance, right? What can you say about u? So the u. The distribution of u will be so the small u is a vector, it will be exponential of minus half okay u minus mu transpose k inverse u minus mu okay. This whole thing divided by 2 pi power n by 2 okay square root of determinant of k there's no difference between um, the previous uh, thing here the first one that i wrote and the one that i just now uh, wrote uh, the only difference is the mean got shifted is that okay sir yes sir we are using here mm. determinant of k it means, sir, that sir, yes. the matrix K we get, sir, it has to be always positive, no, sir? Yes, yes. That's what we discussed in the last class also, right? So this should be yeah. greater than zero. Always greater than zero. It has to be greater than zero. Otherwise, it uh, uh, yes, doesn't sir. make sense. Not just uh, equal to, not equal to zero, but also it should yes, be greater sir. than zero. Because otherwise, it'll get imaginary, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, so okay. of course, uh, it will be always greater than or equal to zero. Why is that? Uh, we will see. Okay, that's what we are going to do next. Okay, so we will study the properties of K. Hmm? Okay. Okay. So let's study some of the properties. So first of all, K is what? Let's let me write this thing. Okay. So K is expected value of what? Expected that's value of not uh, really right so you could, uh, the way you define this is you take a random vector x subtract the mean of this yeah. right and then mm -hmm. this is uh, well uh, if i consider x minus mu x as a row vector um, i have to take the transpose so, okay let me not uh, take the transpose so i'll consider this as a column vector x minus mu x transpose okay or if x is a zero mean random vector, then it's x x transpose expected value. Okay, everything fine. So for now, uh, what can you say about? I'll call this as z. Okay. So what can you say about z? Z is definitely zero mean, right? And what do you think is the covariance? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, I'll just write x minus mu x as z going forward, and then let's look at the properties of this covariance matrix. Is that fine? So the first thing is symmetry, right? So it's symmetric. Easy. Why is that easy? So k transpose is expected value of x minus mu x. Um, 
you know x minus mu x times x minus mu x transpose itself right a b whole transpose is b transpose a transpose so b transpose b is x minus mu x whole transpose if we take transpose again you will get back a minus x minus mu okay so k equal to k transpose uh, the rest uh, has got nothing to do with probability now the moment you do that right um, whatever i'm going to say now uh, is something that you study in linear algebra right the moment um, a matrix is symmetric what all the what are the things that you can uh, say about that matrix if you have a symmetric matrix eigen values are real okay so eigen values are or real okay anything else hmm so it is always diagonalizable okay diagonalizable i'll write whatever you are saying this is also correct okay what else can you say something more about diagonalizable hmm yeah sir we have always get a transformation like we always get a basis as that Hmm. under that basis we can write the transpose transformation as a diagonal transformation directly sir okay so can you be Plus, more specific so how do you diagonalize so can you say something about yeah, the we just, that diagonalizes this yeah that we need to find sir we have to find the eigen vectors and with that eigen vector we have, to, we have to find that matrix correct that will but, uh, can you, uh, no uh, can you tell me more about that that matrix that diagonalizes k or the symmetric matrix orthogonal matrix yeah it's using orthogonal, orthogonal that means it can make it orthonormal right using yes ortho normal matrix right in other words k i can write it as okay um some q okay lambda q transpose okay and this q is also it has certain property right because it is orthonormal q q transpose is q transpose q is identity right is that yes, fine okay. okay so in other words q inverse is q transpose that's something that we have okay um this is okay so what else can you say can you say this you know what this is all of you hmm sir, i positive symmetry positive, positive symmetry. yes symmetry. Uh, what about uh, sumit you know this notation right so not exactly this notation sir ah uh, it's called so positive this... symmetry yes go ahead no sir nothing uh, so this essentially means that it's positive semi definite what does that mean x transpose k x is greater than or equal to 0 for all x in r that's what it says right positive semi definite so how do you prove that so uh, i have to take any x x transpose what is k z z transpose x so x is any fixed vector so i can pull that inside the expectation so what do we get x transpose z z transpose x right do you agree this yes, i can sir. write expected value of x transpose z times x transpose x z transpose whole transpose do you agree mm -hmm. huh so yes. x transpose z is also a number uh, x transpose z whole transpose is also a number right so this is nothing but x transpose z whole squared right this is almost always greater than or equal to 0 no matter what x is right so x belong into r eh? of course uh, x not equal well it doesn't matter if x equal to 0 you'll get 0 so is this fine so it is a positive semi definite matrix so what is the implication of this eigen values are positive right values are non negative it's not positive i think zero may be included but uh, 
it's non negative is that fine yes okay okay um so uh, what else can you say so k is strictly greater than 0 that means positive definite not positive semi definite positive definite if and only if all the eigen values of k are right so lambda i of k is greater than 0 for all i it means all the eigen values should be strictly positive okay this is easy to show i want i leave it as a homework show this okay it's an easy exercise fine hello sir yes sir we have that uh, root uh, root of determinant of k right mm. uh, in uh, pdf mm. uh, yes. so k should uh, always be uh, strictly semi definite right so positive definite right yes. i mean i guess it should always be zero greater correct. than zero correct. correct otherwise it doesn't make sense hmm? right it doesn't make sense so if the uh if the eigen so if the uh, the determinant of k is no, zero that means uh, one of the eigen values is zero uh, that means what expected value of xx transpose um if you look at the covariance that particular matrix um one of the column is a multiplication of the other okay right so it's, it's dependent right so one of the column uh, could be a multiple of the other Do you agree? Yes, sir. So now we can work backward and see what you get, right? If one is a multiple of the other, right? So what will happen? So for example, uh, if you look at two cross two, uh, the variance will be some constant times expected value of x one x two, and uh, yeah, that's what it is, right? So the uh, the variance and this will be equal. Okay, we will see what what are the consequences of that a uh, little later. Hmm? For now, let's let me assume that the determinant of k is non-negative. Is that fine? Okay. Yes, okay. Uh, there is a theorem. I'll just uh, write this, but uh, well, not very important. Uh, I mean, you would know this uh, if. suppose i can write this as a a transpose okay um for some n cross a then uh, this k is positive uh, semi definite okay so <clears throat> what can you say about this this is positive semi definite and not only that um if and if a is non singular you know what non singular is then k is positive is positive definite okay so how do you prove this hmm how do you prove that uh, it's it's positive uh, uh, definite hmm so let's start we will start with the definition like x k x transpose hmm we just See, take first is this, then k is greater if, if a is non singular then k, k hmm. is greater than or equal to zero if a hmm. is non singular then k is positive definite yes okay sir. so let's look at what is what do you mean by that so first of all k is positive semi definite is very trivial i mean we have already proved that yes, so sir. i can write this as q lambda Q transpose. Do you agree? Fine. So this I can write it as lambda is diagonal, right? So I'll write it like this: lambda one, lambda two, etc., lambda n, and we have zero zero here. I can write this as lambda power half times lambda power half Q transpose. I can write this as Q lambda power half Q transpose Q lambda power half Q transpose. Okay. Is that fine? This I can write. I can call this as a. 
this will be a a transpose do you agree is that fine i can always write a k as a a transpose if a is non singular so if a is non singular what does that mean implies lambda power half right it should be strictly greater than zero yes see all the eigen values in the diagonal so this implies lambda i square root should be strictly positive or this should be for all i right this implies what if eigen values are positive what does that implies that implies k is strictly strictly positive right we are done simple right is that okay yes sir is it okay everyone okay now let me write another theorem which is uh, an inverse of this is very quite, quite useful but uh, since it's there in the textbook i'll write it um, so suppose you have uh, let's consider the following right so y equal to some matrix r times w okay w is gaussian zero mean identity covariance okay now suppose i uh, what can you say about y so y also has zero mean right so expected value of y is also zero zero clear what can you say about the covariance this is nothing but expected value of y y transpose that is r w that is y y transpose is w transpose r transpose now i can pull expectation inside so expectation of w w transpose is the covariance of w which is identity so you get r r transpose okay the covariance is r r transpose covariance of y okay now suppose uh, this is important okay this is important in signal processing for example suppose there is a matrix or there is a vector uh, let's say y okay let me call this is uh, uh, wc okay which is gaussian uh, okay let me write uh, it in a slightly in a in a proper fashion okay this is a um, vector a plus some wc okay a is fixed fixed and deterministic no nothing random there okay wc is gaussian zero mean kw as its covariance okay now um suppose i get to observe y okay i don't get to observe a but i get to observe y so uh, suppose consider uh, k power half okay let me just say consider k power k w power minus half y what is this k w power minus half a plus k w power minus half w c okay of course i know what k w is therefore i know k w power minus half well i don't know a but this multiplication is something that i am looking at so um, <clears throat> let's look at what happens to this so let me call this as w i'll define this as w so expected value uh, definitely w is jointly gaussian expected of w is zero because wc has zero mean what can you say about the covariance expected value of okay uh, okay yeah expected value of k w power minus half okay wc wc transpose kw power minus half well kw power minus half is what where can somebody tell me uh, what did i do oh my god let me call this is uh, k covariance of uh, uh, well let me call this is k dash okay w what is kw it's the covariance of wc right kw power minus half is what you write it as q lambda power minus half 
Q transpose. Okay, so where K W is Q lambda Q transpose. Okay, I'm assuming that the covariance is non-singular. Um, so uh, lambda power minus half exists. That is, you take each of the diagonal entries of lambda, and then um, take one by that reciprocal of that, and take the square root. Okay, that's lambda power minus half. You get another diagonal matrix, and this is what you have. Okay, so now what can you say about this? This is expected value of k w power minus half w c w c transpose. Uh, expected value would be what? K w, right? Now, what is it that you can write? Q lambda power minus half Q transpose. Q lambda Q transpose. Q lambda power minus half Q transpose. Okay, is this fine? These two cancels. These two cancels, and you have lambda power minus half uh, times lambda is lambda power half. Lambda power half times lambda power minus half is identity. So you get Q to Q transpose, which is identity. So that means that is K W power minus half times W C is distributed as Gaussian zero mean identity covariance. Whereas this was distributed as zero mean K W as its covariance. So this process of uh, getting an identity covariance. Uh, Gaussian random vector is called whitening. Okay, and this particular WC is called colored noise. Okay, and there's a different color for this colored noise. This is this process is called this process is called whitening. Is that okay? Is that fine, everyone? Yes, sir. This also says that you don't need to worry too much about uh, covariances. As long as you can get rid of it by whitening, you can always, without loss of generality, consider a random vector whose mean is zero and identity covariance. Is that okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now, um, okay, um, let's look at one more uh, small thing and then we'll move on. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> okay, um, so now um, suppose you have uh, um, Z, okay. Um, Suppose I have Z. Z is Gaussian with certain mean and uh, covariance. Okay. Suppose Z is Gaussian with zero mean and covariance K. Okay. I will do theta transpose Z to get, uh, let's say, some X. Okay. Now, why am I doing this? Well, uh, I want to find the covariance of X. Okay. So covariance of x is what? Oh, sorry, uh, the characteristic function of x is what? You know what characteristic function is? Hmm? It's expected value of e to the i phi x is your characteristic function of x. Do you agree? Hmm? Is that fine? Sir, it is like MGF. It's MGF, but the only difference is in MGF you have uh, GX of S, right? Or R. R right? Yes, sir, yes. It's like Fourier transform of the density. Okay. Okay. So now hmm. uh, this turns out to be it's nothing but transform of the density of a Gaussian random vector, Gaussian random variable, because theta transpose z is a Gaussian random variable, because z is a Gaussian random vector. Is that fine? Okay. Now this is nothing but if one can show that this is simple calculation. This will be p squared times the variance of x by two. Okay. So now how do you find the variance of this? Let's look at what is the variance. 
so variance expected value of x is zero so variance would be expected value of x squared right this is nothing but expected value of theta transpose z squared or i can equivalently write this as um z or, or i can write this in a slightly different fashion right so what do you do here how do i write the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, this thing so i can write this as theta transpose z the other one i'll write it as z transpose theta okay so if i take the product of these two i'll get the covariance of sorry the, the uh, variance right i'll pull the expectation inside i'll get theta transpose k theta so the variance of Theta transpose k. So what will be the this thing? So g x of uh, i i phi. This is nothing but exponential of e to the power minus phi squared times theta transpose k theta divided by two. Okay, so this would be the uh, characteristic function. Okay, is that fine? Yes. Sir. Okay. Now, um, <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. So now, uh, any questions? I'll probably pass for two minutes, and then we'll continue. Any questions so far? So phi is a number here, no sir? Just simple a number. Phi is a number. Yeah. Yeah. And theta is a vector. Yes. Okay, so yes. the reason why we do this is what is the characteristic uh, function? So let's look at the characteristic function of a vector. Okay, so what is the characteristic Hello. function of a vector? Hello. Yeah. Yes. Sir, so here x is number. Is it number or vector? It's a number, right? So theta, theta is a vector. Theta is a column vector. Theta transpose is a row vector. Z is a column vector. Row vector times column vector is a number. Okay, so why did we do all this? Essentially, for this, right? So if you have z a vector, okay, this is a vector. Then what is the characteristic function of this? This is something like theta transpose z, right? <clears throat> do you agree? Yes. Do you agree? Sir. Ah, so what is this? This is expected value of e to the power i theta transpose z, right? Yes. Sir. Okay. What is this? This is nothing but g x of i phi, but phi is one, right? So this is nothing but e power minus theta transpose k theta by two. So, okay, that's why we did this. Okay, so we have the characteristic. Sir, yes. I didn't understand this line, sir. Can you explain huh? once? What is that? This uh, g of z, c z, sir. Huh. So you said okay. uh, you replaced phi with theta transpose z here. Huh. so suppose i give you a vector how did we find the um, mgf this was the thing right e to the power i e to the power r transpose x if x is a vector or let's say z just to be consistent so this is how we computed the mgf right is that fine uh, aish yes sir yes ah. sir now suppose i want to find the characteristic function what should i do it should be i times i will not use r i will use theta okay i theta transpose z is that fine do you agree well yes, all sir. that i have to do is i have to find the expected value of this how do you do that this is nothing but theta transpose z is a random variable in fact it's a gaussian random variable with certain covariance and so certain variance and zero mean right i'm looking at expected value of e to the power i times some random variable so let me call this as e to the i x x is your random variable what is this called this is called characteristic function right i uh, well uh, i'll if i put a phi here okay so this is uh, characteristic function of i phi but i'll evaluate this at 1 phi equal to 1 you agree it's expected value of e to the i phi x i want expected value of e to the i x so i have to put phi equal to 1 right 
so the characteristic function of a gaussian random variable with zero mean and variance sigma x squared is given by this right e to the power minus phi squared sigma x squared by 2 i have to put phi equal to 1 here but what is sigma x squared sigma x squared is nothing but theta transpose k theta okay if x is theta transpose z so that's what i have substituted here to get this is that okay yes sir yes sir yeah okay okay any other questions maybe i'll pass for one minute now after this and then we'll uh, look at something very interesting uh, slightly algebraically involved conceptually simple okay whatever i'm going to teach from now onwards till some point till i teach gaussian processes um essentially the math or the principle behind the math is quite straightforward it's almost you know high school math but uh, the algebraic manipulations uh, are involved okay okay any other question okay now let's look at conditional uh, pdfs okay for gaussian gaussian random vectors okay so the first exercise would be to find uh, suppose you have two uh, random vectors random um, variables x and y Uh, with certain joint distribution or covariance k then how do you find x given y okay that's the thing okay so before i start uh, what is x given y of x given y suppose you have two random variables it's joint divided by f y of y you remember this and f y of y is what multiple f x y of x y dx from minus infinity okay so let's keep this mind okay okay now uh, so let's take i'll directly jump to the general case and i'll uh, leave the special case as an exercise so you take x1 x2 etc xn okay this is one random variable similarly i'll consider y which is y1 y2 etc y m as this note that this is uh, yeah so these so i'll just use n for this the dimensions are different okay so these two are jointly gaussian okay these two are jointly gaussian random vectors of uh, length n and m okay um so the covariance of uh, x could be uh, would be so let's say the covariance of x is kx covariance of y would be ky okay now i can also talk about the covariance of uh, the cross covariances right in some sense x and y do you agree do you agree so what is cross covariance so i have to take the vector so let me write is a different color so cross covariance between x and y would be this x1 x2 etc xn and i'll multiply it by y1 y2 etc ym okay and i'll take the expected value of this well assuming that it's zero mean okay if it's not zero mean then um, you have to subtract the mean so always unless i explicitly say the mean i'll assume it to be zero okay if required i'll explicitly say that it's a non zero mean and i'll factor for it i'll include it is that fine so what is the size of this this is n rows in one column this is one row and n m columns so the resulting matrix would be n by n, n rows m columns so now if you take a vector um, you know um, <clears throat> which is append basically i'm going to append the two okay so i'll say x1 x2 etc xn y1 y2 etc y 
m this is n plus m columns one row right so they have one by n plus one is that fine i'll take this factor and find the covariance what do you think is the covariance of this can somebody tell me hmm yes what will be the covariance of this vector the new vector x1 x2 etc xn y1 y2 y3 and so on by m so what should i do sir it will be made up of four uh, sub matrices i think yes right so what will be that those four sub matrices k x y k this is the first one okay uh, i'll write it like this okay so maybe uh, it will help to visualize so this will be x1 etc xn y1 etc ym okay and similarly x1 etc xn y1 etc ym okay fine okay so uh, this if i have to write this i can write it in a slightly different fashion right i'll take for example this x1 through xm multiply by x1 through uh, xn right what do i get this times this would be what it's nothing but a matrix of size n by n and if i take expected value i get kx right that is the covariance of this now i have to multiply the same this by y1 through ym right so i have to take y1 through ym and i'll multiply this with this again what do i get this is n row by 1 and this is one row uh, one row and m column so n by 1 times 1 by m is n by m so that i get n rows therefore it matches with kx this is nothing but x comma y right this is the covariance the cross covariance is that fine now what happens to this this <clears throat> y1 and i can do y1 through ym and x1 through xm so that same as x1 through xn y1 through ym transpose so that's nothing but kxy transpose and you similarly have ky is this fine this is the matrix that you get okay everything fine so far yes sir huh? okay <clears throat> yes sir so what do you find uh, how do you find k inverse so essentially well i should not uh, have an expected value here so the expected value will be this okay so now uh, with this let's state uh, an interesting theorem so um, and i'll stop for today maybe next class we'll see why that is true or i'll leave it uh, for you to read but i'll do it in the next class anyway okay so suppose x and y are jointly gaussian uh, non singular random vectors okay x y jointly Gaussian. Okay, this is uh, random vectors. Okay. Now um, I can say what is f of x given y of x given y. Okay. This will be exponential of. Um, okay, I'm not going to write it uh, today. So okay, I'll write it x plus. b inverse c i'll say what b inverse and uh, c are okay y okay transpose b x plus b inverse c y okay so this is in the numerator divided by 2 pi power n by 2 square root of determinant of d inverse this is nothing but uh, i can write it as uh, as a multiplication of multiplication by square of square root of determinant of b because determinant of b inverse is 1 by determinant of b okay is that fine so any idea how did we get this okay i should say what is a b and all that right um <clears throat> i have to say what is a b uh, all that right so um i'll call this as b 
this as a C. I have not used the A, right? This as C, okay? And uh, this as D, okay? Of course, this will be C transpose, KXY transpose. Is that fine? So if I have a jointly Gaussian random vector with covariance given by B, C, D, and uh, C transpose, then X given Y has a density which is given by this. In other words, X given Y equal to Y has a density which is Gaussian with mean what? What is the mean? The mean would be minus B inverse C times Y and covariance being B inverse. Okay, it's interesting, right? It's very, very easy to write. Uh, if you remember this, uh, all that I have to do is, if you have this joint distribution, joint covariance, um, if I say what is X given Y, it's again Gaussian with mean given by minus B inverse C uh, times Y. And uh, okay, I think it should be Y, okay, small Y. Hmm? And B inverse as its covariance, okay? So any questions? How, okay, how do you get this? Any idea? The mean is easy, like x plus. We can write x minus of minus. minus no, no, no. Uh, that is easy. I mean, I'm not asking how did you get this. Okay. So here. it is just a self translation by that mean. Exactly, just a translation by mean and a change in covariance, right? Yes. But uh, how did you get this uh, expression x given y? How do you prove that this is the expression? How do you find? So suppose I give you a joint distribution. Well, do you know the joint distribution? I know, right? Why? Because I know the covariance given by this. So I know the joint distribution. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Yeah. So how do you find conditional? I have to find f of xy given divided by fy of y, right? So that will give me f y x given y of x given y divided by f y of y. Sorry. It gives you the conditional, right? This will give you the conditional, right? What is joint distribution? F x y. OK, let me write uh, I'll start Let me the idea of the proof. It's very, very easy. x y of x y is what? It's Gaussian with 0 mean and covariance k. So k is given by this beast b c d and uh, c transpose so this is nothing but b c c transpose and d this is what we have okay and uh, what is f y of y gaussian zero mean k y right that's the covariance k y okay so now i know the expression for this i know the expression for this i have to divide and show that conditional is nothing but this is that okay? I have to basically do some uh, you know squaring of the exponent, but otherwise uh, we have the answer. Okay, I'll do that in the next class. It takes some time to write, or I'll leave it as an exercise. So please go through it. If you don't get it, I'll do it in the next class. Otherwise, I'll skip this. Hmm? Okay. okay. Yeah. So hopefully, in the next class that is tomorrow, we will probably start uh, the uh, Gaussian processes. Okay. Hmm? which will be interesting and um, please blur brush up Fourier transform Fourier series sync functions all that hmm? okay okay sir. okay sir okay sir yeah okay so we will uh, I think I'll stop here and then see uh, by next week I'm going to finish the uh, Gaussian processes as well and the uh, Wiener process Brownian motion and then we will start with finite state Markov chains. Okay, that's what uh, I will do. And then I will teach a little bit about uh, Markov decision processes. Okay, I'm planning to do that. Okay, I uh, out of uh, interest. And then if time permits, renewal processes. Otherwise, uh, I may have to skip the renewal processes. Hmm? Or I will skip MDP and do renewal processes. That's the agenda for uh, this course. Okay, yeah, I'll stop here and uh, we will meet uh, tomorrow again. Okay, fine. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye, sir. Bye.